Greetings, McMillanites. The purpose of this lecture is really to give you a foundation that's gonna help you on the unit one assignment. The unit one assignment is really about reinforcing what we should have learned in Program Fundamentals 1. And that is, more importantly, the, the three elements of a function. But before I get to that, let me share my screen and kind of go through what my brain is processing as I try to give you hints to help you be successful on this particular assignment. So let's do a quick share screen. As I think about this particular assignment, we are really, really reinforcing what we've learned in unit one. So I went through lessons and I went through unit one. Make sure you as a student in my class are consciously going through each of these elements. I even had a new video posted previously that we talked about the intro to the class. That we, uh, It's really kind of framing the class overall and expectations. So make sure you look at that video at the top. But if I'm a student in this class, I'm gonna make sure that I go down and I complete each one of these elements in the unit in particular, since we don't have traditional in-class lecture. Make sure that you use this as supplemental material. And uh, it, it's, you're getting my quotes, not necessarily from me in particular, but you're gonna get, get a flavor of me also through these lessons as you go forward. I'm gonna reinforce through these some uh, homework assignments or extra credits that I do. Every point counts. At the end of the semester, I wanna make sure that you have the maximum points. I really care about your success. And it's not about the grades you earn, but what you learn. Keep that in mind as we move forward. We find ourselves here on the unit one assignment, making decisions and programming. You will find that I sent an announcement and also an email related to the three elements of a function which we reinforce here. In fact, I've asked that you study this REPL.IT link. Okay, I'm gonna open in a new incognito window, window because that particular element is a great thing to do. In fact, you can actually just fork off if you click this fork button here and you log on as i showed you in the previous video you can fork off my code you have an, a, a, an exact copy of the code that i'm using in this particular example for you to kind of work with and kind of see how i broke things apart you even have an implementation of my input validation code which is one of many type methods possible for validating your code and so that's what we're working with as we move forth through these process there, thereof, can we make sure that we are serving the audience well that we're working with by making sure that we validate content? Is it truly an integer? Is it truly a double? Is it truly a string? Is it one word or multiple words? That's what input validation does for us. And the CN, uh, the insertion operator and the extraction operator, or as I like to call it lovingly in this class, the CN waka waka, Input validation replaces that. So whereas you see, you would just use CN option, you see that I'm saying option equals validate string option. And so what that will do, it will call the input validation dot H code that we have over here, go to the particular method for validate string. It's gonna take it through a process to make sure that we truly have string data before it allows the user to, to, to proceed. Now definitely study that code, but certainly fork off this code and you have a great starting point. But let's not go too far and too deep without first exploring those vital, vital elements of a function. What do we mean by that? If you go out to the announcements area, the first week one assignment, you will see that I have broken down the elements of a function in the agenda for week one. Look closely here and you will see that uh, there are three elements of the function that we want to be cognizant of as we go forth. First, we have to remember that the functions have a function prototype in C++. We declare and we initialize that function in memory. Generally speaking, the prototype lives above int main, and we're working through that process of really kind of declaring and initializing that function in memory. And so, Remember that the prototype has the general syntax, rules of the language, return type, function name, using camel notation generally. Sometimes they want us to use capitalization, but overall function notation is fine. And parameters, if any. Remember they become arguments when we have data later on when we call it. 
So if I look closely at this particular prototype, I say void. Void is a function that has no return type. If you have void, there shouldn't be a return anywhere inside that function definition. Very, very important to remember that. Welcome message is the name of the function. Very, very unique to function prototypes. We have a semicolon at the end of the item thereof. So keep that in mind as we move forward. This example is a, where we have also a second function prototype called double make bank. In this instance, we have indeed a function called make bank that takes two parameters of, of data type Boolean. And we are indeed, per the example that we showed in program fundamentals one, we're talking about the ability of my wonderful little sister to get money from mom and dad to request money divide and conquer strategy. She can say, mom, can I have $20? Dad, can I have $20? And she has anywhere from zero to $40. By the end of that day, we wrote a function to help us determine how much make bank little sister could get from the parents. So that's what we talked about. But importantly, element number one is the function prototype. Remember that it lives above in main. Element number two is the function definition. That's where we tell the function what to do, right? We are giving it the opportunity to now be the meat. Even if you get one of those delicious Beyond Burgers, this is the meat of how we tell the function what to do. All the commands you write in it main are possible to write here, but when the function is called, we're saying do this. Function definitions are essential. So when void welcome message, when a welcome message is called, what I'm saying is C++, these are statements I want you to show on screen. Very, very important in terms of the output. Here's what I want you to do when this function is called. As we look closely at the definition for make bank, notice that when we get into definition, which of course, by the way, lives below int main or in a header file, as I've shown you in the example that we'll see here in a few moments, um, we now have the details where we say return type, make bank. Notice the definition doesn't have semicolons at the end. That's very, very important to emphasize no semicolons at the end of definitions because it will start processing. And as I like to say, the program will throw up. We don't need semicolons at the end of definitions. But make bank takes two parameters, boo mom's response, boo dash response, true or false. Mom's is gonna say yes or no, true, false. Dad's gonna say yes or no. Based on what mom or dad says, little sister will get returned her bank amount. That number will be anywhere from zero to $40 based on what the parents say. And as you recall in program fundamentals one, for those who had me, we wrote code and statements here to process with an if else block related to that decision making process and accumulated the sister bank variable plus equals based on what the parent response was. So keep that in mind as we move forward. But ah ha ha, don't forget that indeed at the end of this process there, we will need a function call. The function call is how we initiate. We tell that function that we now want to call and utilize its parameters. Keep in mind that uh, we indeed, if it's a void function, don't need to do anything special. We just say the name of the function, semicolon at the end. Don't repeat the word void, don't do anything special with it, simply, in the midst of int main or another function, say welcome message semicolon, that function is called. However, when you have return type function like make bank, remember that it must live within the scope of a C out, C out waka waka, all right, insertion operator, extraction operator, a C out waka waka, sister manipulates, and this is dollar sign, we're able to print that amount of money that sister earned based on the parent's response of mom and dad, assuming those are both Boolean variables in this example. I won't go too deeply into this, but also remember that a return type function is capable of being captured, like pitched. I talked about the example of pitching. Remember when you return, you're pitching the data to uh, another location and you need to catch it. You can use a, a function, for instance, called, uh, uh, excuse me, a variable called double results to capture the results of the function, mom, dad, and then later just show results on screen as opposed to the call of the function itself. Either way, make sure you're doing the work of working through the process of capturing that data once it's returned. And that's why we need a C out or a variable to capture the data. 
study that, study that. That's very, very important. So what I'm asking that you do in this lecture is really, really note and study those three elements of the function from Programming Fundamentals 1, because you're going to need them in the Unit 1 assignment. You're going to need them for this example that I give you. And in this basic example, it's really going to kind of help you get there to kind of study, to help you get prepared. Make no mistake, this assignment is designed to help you on the Unit 1 assignment. I'm teaching you how to fundamentally put together functions, to put together a menu in programming, and really kind of make a user-driven menu to make decisions and to really solve the problem thereof. So whereas in the assignment, we're just working with various random functions, you will be using the same kind of technique to help you in the physics calculators that's gonna be involved in this particular assignment, the unit one assignment. So I've tasked you at hand, McMillan Knights was saying, if we were in class, we would be live doing this, but since we're not in class, I do have this example available for your own demand for you to study, to really kind of look at, to fork off of, to really kind of work with and kind of implement. You're welcome to use this code to help you get started on a unit one assignment. But let's look at this very carefully. We're gonna make a function here using REPL called function practice your last name. Recall that we have the online IDE link in our class menu. Let me go back up to that. You can use that online IDE REPL to go directly into C++11. Make sure that you're naming your files uh, as we designated, all right? Name your files as we designated because REPL comes up with some very, very random funny names like uh, nocturnal aggravating comments. Hmm, uh, that has nothing to do with functions, but it's so, so, so funny. Right here, you can really kind of change that and just really, really put uh, your own twist per my assignment instruction. So I'm asking that you really name this file, functions practice your last name. Use that convention because that's going to be a lot more, a lot better for you when you're looking forward to really kind of implementing this code later. So as I push enter, it's gonna, and it already knows who I am because I've logged on. Uh, it, it now has remembered who I am. I, I didn't go deeply into this last video, but look under version control here. I also can create a GitHub repo. I've also created a GitHub account behind the scenes and it knows who I am with GitHub as well. As I make changes over here and I put, uh, you know, uh, practice, function as I as I make changes I can kind of commit and push to github and save that work so that I'm getting credit in the the world of developers for what I'm doing as well uh, teaching functions Right? I'm just kind of committing and pushing and giving myself credit in both worlds so you see there's a seamless integration between the two tools as we work forth with the development process thereof. What I'm asking you to do in this particular in-class assignment is really, really work to use the three elements of a function to solve several different functions and also have a menu-driven program within it. So I have actually given you the base program, including a, a function prototype here called void handle option, which will enable you to select menu options to really, really call the function on demand that the users need. So there's gonna be a function in here for option A, which is gonna be able to, to print multiple uh, characters uh, in a pattern based on uh, the this, this character you give it, it's gonna create triangle patterns based on it. It's actually pretty cool. You'll get to see how that code works. I've asked that you do an even odd checker function and really kind of work with that. And that's going to be option B in the menu. Then option C is going to be a uh, reverse the number input item thereof. Option D is to get the minimum max of three numbers that are passed as arguments. Can you tell me which one is min max and which one is uh, uh, you know, the, yes, in terms of this whole particular list of things, uh, the least the greatest in terms of those number comparison operations. Uh, tell me the min max of three numbers. Uh, one option E is going to be exit, and X is going to be clear to screen. Now, make sure that you look at my REPL code that I've given you in the class menu. In fact, I think I've linked, linked it uh, to you. If not, I'll get it to you here real soon. The key is that you, you look over this assignment and really, really kind of uh, use it as a base to help you start. In fact, if you go into lessons, I'm quite certain in unit one, 
that I have given you this working base code. If you come into the unit one assignment, like I'm gonna go here, right down there, you're gonna notice at the very, very top of the assignment, I've said study, study this, because there's the very, very importantly, this is the base code for what we would have written in class, but I've also implemented for you out here. As REPL loads, you're gonna see various elements that are really ready for this. This is kind of the Linux and Ubuntu environment. This is not development for Windows. This is not development for Visual Studio. We're just getting right to the development process here on the screen. And so uh, uh, this is the base code I've written to help you kind of get started and understand how functions work so you can apply this to the unit one assignment. I highly recommend that you write this yourself and you work your way kind of through it to understand it as my mentor, Dr. Dr. Alex said, to really understand it so you can see how these processes work. So I'm gonna just magnify it a tad here and show you how I've kind of divided this problem up. We have our function practice Macmillan. We have our traditional int main here. I'm playing with color options that are available here. If you click on the fork starters link in our class menu, you'll see how I am a really implement, implementing various code color for the Ubuntu environment. So if you click on this Dr. D color via console, non-Windows platforms, just to show you how I'm implementing color in that environment. Also make sure you look at this fork starter for input validation. If you wanna use that to help you get started on future assignments, you're welcome to do that as well. But as we find ourselves here in the functions practice, we are really, really kind of looking at a main.cpp. I've written the functions separately in functions.h and even showing you how to use the if not to find, what to do what with a function, but don't forget that at the end of it, there's this end if here. Main is calling functions.h, you see that? Certainly. And certainly input validation is being called if I'm not mistaken, right here in the functions.h file. Input validation is filed 125 plus lines that I wrote to help you validate input. It replaces CN traditionally just as a safer mechanism for validating input. Let's see how it kind of runs and I'll go deeper into some of the code here, uh, all right? So as you notice, I have a, a menu-driven program as, as I mentioned in the specifications. If I put in A, and notice that A is green, like my shirt, ha, 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 ha. If I put in A and I put in any character like T, and I went, oh, what's over now? Enter is telling me right T is wrong because I should, uh, it's asking for an enter. I'm gonna put in a five. So digit T. I'd like to show T in triangles of their triangle that points up and triangle that points down. That's what we're asking to do there. Notice that if I push X, it's gonna clear the screen. And notice if I say C, it goes into the reverse menu. I love menu driven programs because they, they really, really help us kind of work through things. So C, let me do really kind of, all right, there we go. There's our reverse number. So I want y'all to study this. This is not 100% what we're doing in a unit one assignment, but it's helping to frame the work. How did I work through the process? Here we go, function.h. Remember three elements of a function? Look at here, folks. These are my function prototypes. In the same file, you notice that I have the definitions. All right? You'll see how I kind of wrote those and what I did to make that menu-driven program work. All right? You'll see when I called the functions at various locations, remember those three elements of the function. And I want you to use all the intelligence that you gather from using this program. I'm going to push E to exit here. Goodbye, hasta luego, hasta la vista, baby. Depends on how you want to say goodbye to the folks thereof. I want you to use the knowledge that you gain in this particular assignment to help you on the unit one assignment. In lessons unit one, I am asking you to create a physics calculator using your understanding of functions. I'm asking that you work through this and you work through velocity, you work through acceleration. In other words, you're gonna ask the user for the unit of measure, all right? Append those values to the answer, but you also ask for the inputs of the DS, the DT, and the units. You go ahead and process, calculate, and then you output to the screen something that makes sense to the, to the user. 
This is a classic input process output program. This is classic implementation of functions program. And you're gonna be doing this on various physical physics calculations that you put in the menu style. So don't let this overwhelm you. Start by first studying, study very, very closely my implementation of the functions practice. Then take the knowledge that you have here and the formulas that you have related to velocity, formulas you have related to acceleration, formulas you have related to motion, and make me a menu-driven program that allows me to say, you know what, I wanna calculate motion, in particular the uh, M motion at index A, when which I have to solve for V, these various equ equations. Or I'm interested in calculating acceleration. And you say, okay, Dr. T, if you want an acceleration, give me the DV value, give me the DT value, tell me what your unit of measure is, like in meters per second, and I will pin those to the screen and show it to there. So your objective, implement input process output, show me that you know the, the three elements of a function, and this will give us a great foundation for being strong here in programming fundamentals too. And therefore, you get started on this early. This is not an assignment that you, you can begin the day before it's due. And that's intentional. I'm showing you that you're really gonna have to be intentional about planning your schedule, working very intently, putting those hours in. Although I'm there for you, you're still gonna have to put forth the time. But I know you can do this. You are McMillanite, and I am the McMillan in McMillanite, and I am rooting for you to be successful in this class. Hit me up via email, and I'm happy to help you. If you wanna have some video-driven sessions, email me by appointment. We can talk about those options available as well. Keep up the good work. I'm rooting for you. I'm gonna stop the screen here and let you kind of process what we've done here in the video thus far. All right, McMillan Lights, keep moving forth. Work at least one week ahead. That's what's gonna keep you successful in this class. Thank you and have a good night.